Hey everyone, uh, Damien here, Sleepy Reader 666. Uh, just wanted to share some thoughts with you about Batman Incorporated number one, Fantastic Four 606, and Hulk Smash Avengers number four of the five issue miniseries. Um, Hulk Smash Avengers was a lot of fun. Uh, I've been slightly disappointed so far with the series and and I keep looking over at my microphone and uh, hopefully the microphone's picking me up from over on this side. I keep fiddling with how I'm going to make a microphone work. Um, so, so far Hulk Smash Avengers kind of disappointed me a little bit. It's not living up to the Hulk, the Hulk smashing uh, side of things enough. Um, but this issue really delivered. It's got lots of snappy dialogue. It features the uh, uh, Hulk character, or you know, a version of the Hulk called in the here. It's called Mister Fix It. I'm not sure if that was what he was always called, and I'm unfamiliar with that era of the Hulk. It kind of makes me want makes me want to check it out. Uh, he faces the West Coast Avengers, led by Hawkeye, uh, with Iron Man and Tigra and Wonder Woman in it, and a large portion of the issue is taken up by a nice big fight. Uh, I liked the art after a while. It took me a little while to get into the art. It's not, it's kind of this uh, blotchier, ink heavy style. Um, and I don't know if the flow from panel to panel was the greatest, but, but he's definitely good at action and it, and it was a lot of fun. The color maybe um, weighed down on the art a little too heavily. Um, but overall, th this was, if you're in the mood for some Hulk smashing the Avengers, uh, this was a good one to go with. My computer started to try to fall asleep. Don't know why it does that while I'm recording. Doing these videos is making me more pissed at my computer than I used to be. Uh, so anyway, I enjoyed it. Um, makes me kind of look forward to the next issue. But each issue is completely different. Because um, it's a completely different team. Artistic team. And a completely different era in Marvel continuity. Um, so anyway, yeah, and that was written by Jim McCann. And I just picked up his uh, Mind the Gap because other people recommended it. So I'm going to be reading that later today. Um, so it's, it'll be interesting to see, compare his superhero work to, uh, to his image work. Uh, then uh, Fantastic Four 606 was a pretty satisfying um, one-issue one story. They're uh, the Fantastic Four are on a mission into this strange environment, another world, another dimension, something we're not quite sure during most of the story. It spools back and forth through time in a very effective way. Uh, Jonathan Hickman, the writer, seems to be a master of um, pacing and moving stories uh, in just the right way. So it's very pleasing. And, and I really like the art, and I really like the coloring here. I think the artist uh, perhaps knew the colorist was good or just trust colorists and uh, left a lot of space for the colorist to work with. It might be, I kind of started to guess that maybe the art was just done with pencils and, and no ink. Um, or perhaps it was drawn directly onto a computer, you know, with one of those tablets they've got. Uh, but it, I really enjoyed the art. I really enjoyed the color. So it seems like with modern digital coloring, you can get so many different possible effects, and sometimes it's hugely pleasing. Um, and uh, the, the artist was Ron Garney, and the colorist was um, Jason Keith. So they make a good team. Um, <clears throat> what it, it was a little, it was kind of a little science fiction story with a little bit of a clever twist at the end. And there was no, um, there was no B story. There was no extra plot threads. There was nothing else going on, but the one story, the mission that they were on and accomplishing it. There was just the minorest of byplay between the characters, and it it made me think. And I don't know if this is true for a lot of Marvel now. Probably not, but it it made me think of the Silver Age. When DC started to, uh, when Marvel started to clobber DC, and DC had 
these beautiful little stories, often in a science fiction or fantasy mode, that had a, a little bit of clever touches and very little characterization um, and very little connection, very little continuity or connection to other stories. And that's what this was like. If so it was sort of ironic that the Fantastic Four, which I think of as the the uh, figureheads, the, the, the leading point of the original Marvel revolution that gave us so much extra flavor in comics, um, in this beautifully done issue is sort of a beautiful, more adult, sophisticated example of those old Silver Age DC stories. Although probably in an old DC story would have been nine or ten pages long. Um, so this is enjoyable. You, if you miss this issue, you certainly don't miss anything important. Um, and there's no great revelation at the end. It's, um, it's fun enough. And then I, I really liked um, Batman Incorporated, and that was a big surprise for me uh, <clears throat> for a couple of reasons. One, I, I had not read the Batman Incorporated that came along just before the New, D New 52, and from what everyone's saying, this pretty much ignores being in the New 52 universe and uh, acts as if the old DC is still happening. And also, I, um, so I didn't know too much of what was going on. Uh, I'll just have to figure out the backstory as further issues come along. Um, and, uh, but I had read a lot of Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin, so I had a general feeling of sort of how Grant Morrison handles Batman and Robin together with although before it was Dick Grayson, Batman, not Bruce Wayne. Uh, and another thing going against it is I think the whole idea of Robin and this little kid in the Batman world is so uh, ridiculous, and it kind of tends to ruin Batman for me sometimes. And uh, I really disliked Grant, what Grant Morrison's done on Superman lately, so I, I figured Grant Morrison is spinning off... Uh, and not doing his best work right now, or just being weird but not caring too much about things. Um, but this issue was totally weird. Beautiful art by Chris Burnham had kind of a very, what I think of as a very European flavor. Um, artist, like the art, kind of art styles that I seem to see when I look at European graphic novels, maybe especially from France or thereabouts. And very bloody because the opening scene takes place in an abattoir, a, uh, a meat, I guess a meat packing factory of some kind. But it was so cool, um, all the weird little Grant Morris stuff, Morse, Grant Morrison stuff just works really well, so I'm, I'm back in Grant Morrison's court um, wanting to see what he does next. So, so I really like this issue and uh, <clears throat> it, it does sort of strike me that this is Grant Morrison, it's not Batman. It's not what I think of as Batman, because um, it's, I don't know. He's hardly a hero, he's just this creature. No, that's, that's wrong. Anyway, it's, uh, it's just this weird Grant Morrison thing, and more than it's Batman uh, to me. Um, but I'm, I'm along for the ride, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad it's only $2.99. I'm kind of upset about Scott Snyder, Snyder's Batman going to four bucks. I may switch to trades on that. I just, I just don't like to pay too much uh, because a, a bunch of four buck books really eat into my budget and they just don't seem, seem worth it to me, uh, especially because there's so many ways to get comics cheaper these days. So I'm going to be back in a little bit reviewing some more comics. I... I've uh, been having trouble with my computer and video, so I actually recorded a review uh, two days ago and wasn't able to get it up. So uh, this is Sleepy Reader uh, saying, see you soon.